Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Patreon podcast. This week, I wanted to talk about um, just kind of album ideas and how I go about figuring out how I want to execute an album. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure what to talk about on this one, but I feel like it's kind of a good idea because I just started the National Solo Album Month, the Nasso Elmo, which is essentially to sit down and write an album over the course of a month, which I've done in the past. Um, I've actually done several times in the past. Uh, Do This Justice was, I think, the first Nasso Elmo I did, and then Covered in Cats, and then One Last Bonfire Before the World Ends, and then last year I did Felt Cute Might Delete Later. So I'm definitely not a stranger to this challenge. Um, interestingly, though, a lot of the ways that I came about and came through the idea for the album uh, are different. It's it's usually something that happens during the process of writing. Um, a lot of the times I'm sitting down and I'm just making music. I'm making any kind of music that I want. And things kind of tend to crystallize throughout that. Um, for Well, actually, no. There was another album before Do This Justice called uh, Dream State, which was the first album in a month uh, challenge that I did, which was actually the RPM challenge, which is something that happens in February. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, for that one, I did have a concept album for it where it was like this progression through going to sleep, dreaming, and then waking up afterwards. Um, so I had a fairly good idea of what I wanted to do in that album, but it, when it came to do this justice, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I sat down and I had some ideas, but for the most part, it was just kind of flailing around and trying to figure out, you know, what works and what didn't. And as the album progressed, I kind of do this justice as a weird album. Anyway, if you haven't heard it, I'll, I'll try to remember to link it in the, uh, the post description here, but it's on my band camp. It's on, um, it's on Spotify. You should be able to find it, but it's kind of like, not like, rock but it's definitely aggressive there's a lot of very aggressive songs in it there's a lot actually a surprising amount of singing which (laughs) is a little embarrassing um but for the most part like the album was very kind of aggressive and that is definitely not exactly something that i do all the time and it turned out to be just kind of this really strong album and do this justice kind of came from one of the lyrics inside of that album And I just really liked how it sounded and how it all came together. And in that case, like I didn't really have a plan. I think like, I think I just took a picture of a vinyl and I, um, with that for the album art is essentially just a black and white picture of vinyl with do this justice written on it. And, um, so I, I like doing that a lot where I take a picture of my handwriting and I overlay that on other pictures. I, I, especially a lot of my newer or my older my older albums had that aesthetic where it was kind of like written on. Um, and I think that that's still pretty cool, but that, that whole album just kind of came together through random, <clears throat> just random songs that were made. Uh, when it came to covered in cats though, I, I feel like I, I had a little bit more of a direction as to where I wanted it to go. Uh, the songs in general are a lot more chill Uh, compared to do this justice anyway and i think that because of that uh covered in cats is just a more relaxing album in general and let me i'm I'm looking at the 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 songs for this and yeah a lot of them are either like super early dub tech for me or solo piano or i was listening to a lot of pretty lights at the time a color map of the sun is a fantastic album Um, and like still kicking, I think was, uh, a song like that. And again, I actually had several songs on here that I think have singing or at least spoken word. And I, I really like the, the, the album in a month challenges for that, where it's just something where I have to just kind of crank through it. And usually a lot of that revolves around, um, trying to just do things live and just do that and get it done and get it over with and get it, get it out there. And I really like where a lot of this went. Um, there's a lot of chill music. It's really, it's a really good one. Um, but the, the concept for this, uh, covered in cats just, just came from the four cats we had at the time. Uh, and unfortunately they've all passed, but they all, um, they all just kind of 
piled on <laughs> my wife and and the album art kind of reflects that too where it's just like two shoes and a hand sticking out of a, just a big pile of cats and the the concept the concept for that was just you know something cute and and fun and I feel that the music kind of reflected that where it's not as aggressive it wasn't as in your face as the um do this justice was because of the just the general concept of what I wanted was just more chill and it might also have reflected on um the just the style uh that I've been that I had been focusing on back in 20 I think it was 2015 um and, and you know I think that that's a big part of it as well and then we moved on to one last bonfire before the world ends I believe and that one was uh, that one was a lot of fun. I definitely had a more direct approach for that one. I had thought of the album name a couple days before the challenge started. I was um, I was mowing the lawn, and I had um, I was thinking, you know, we should have a we should have a bonfire before the year ends, essentially before it gets too cold to actually um, to have a bonfire. And I was like, hmm, one last bonfire. That's that's a really cool, that's a really cool visual, um, and then you know having having before the world ends one last bonfire before the world ends, get, just like gives this really interesting feel to the whole album where it's just like it has this solemn urgency I guess it it's really hard for me to describe um, how exactly the the album is for me but i was lucky enough to work with madam barry for the artwork and just the 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 desolation of just like it's just these empty trees and somebody just sitting in front of a bonfire i i I really love the artwork and i'm I'm so happy to actually have the original she mailed it to me it's it's above my desk i look at it like every day but the the feeling for this album I like to call quietly apocalyptic where it's just like it's it's there and there's definitely something like portented like there's something coming but it's like inevitable and it's just something that you've um kind of come to terms with where all of the songs have like this quiet storm in the background to them and that wasn't necessarily on purpose but it's it's kind of just like how it all came together was was really very interesting for me where um the it starts kind of um idm some very glitchy stuff and then it kind of goes into these um kind of lo-fi house songs where it's all really quiet and um still driving but it has like this lo-fi feel to it i was listening to a lot of um there's an artist on spotify called ross from friends which is a great name for anybody, any kind of artist, but he or they do a lot of um, just lo-fi house. Like if if you think of like lo-fi hip hop where it's like sampling old things and like bringing in all of this kind of vintage sounding audio, um, Ross from Friends does a lot of that when it comes to creating a, a house track, something that you can like more dance to. And um, like wake up call was a big one for that. And I believe monster hugs was kind of inspired by that. Um, and there, there was just a lot of that. And then, um, I added the song phantoms, which kind of really for me solidifies it's, it's really kind of at the tail end of the album, but it kind of solidifies for me what the whole album is, where it's just like, it's about these ghosts that can't really leave, but they can't stay and it's just something that um i don't know that song just really hits me um phantom specifically was inspired by a song by mr bill called screening um and you can if you listen to screening you'll definitely hear the influence it's very very similar <laughs> but it was it was inspired by that and i wanted to try that style where you have a very simple like four note melody and you just keep building on it and building on it and building on it until it kind of breaks into something else where with phantoms it doesn't really turn into anything else it just kind of it it evolves into a mood that i really like um and then The one last bonfire before the world ends is kind of that big climactic event. And then after that is a a brief 
briefer song called Snow and Ashes, which kind of uh, ties up the album and whatever kind of story you gleam through the whole rest of the album, I, I feel that it kind of ties it all together. One thing I really like about One Last Bonfire Before the World Ends is how it feels kind of like a story, but you have to put together all of the pieces yourself. It's like, uh, it's like, I was going to say, it's like the dark souls of albums, which is to say it's very, it's very open to interpretation until you really start digging through it. And I, I like that about that album. It was really nice. Um, and this is also the first time I believe from the, uh, the timed challenges, the album in a month challenge where I brought in songs that I had already made for the final release. Um, when it came to the final album, uh, preserve the mind and claustrophobic in clouds or crossed claustrophobic in crowds, uh, were both songs that I had made probably like six or nine months prior. And they felt like a really good fit for this album. And I didn't really have a place for them otherwise. So it kind of turned into this habit of mine where all of the um, songs that I had made that didn't really have a home, they kind of just became auditioned for the album in a month thing at the end of the year. So I, I had a place to put those songs. And I definitely did that and felt cute uh, as well. But I feel that it really fit inside of uh, One Last Bonfire because of the kind of story that it creates where you're it starts kind of like glitchy and and then it gets calm and then it just builds up this tension with preserve the mind and this anxiety with claustrophobic and clouds and it, it has all of this like motion to it and i feel that it was just a really really solid album on that front um and then last year um we did felt cute might delete later which has probably one of the most adorable album arts um, that I've <laughs> really put out. And that was um, thanks to Leone Yu from Twitter. Um, she uh, she put that together really quickly for me and she did a fantastic job. And I'm really, really pleased with how this album art came out and really the album as a whole. Um, I had been listening to a lot of lo-fi hip hop, a lot of like really minimal audio and I wanted to try that out. And you'll notice that there's a very common thread through all of these where it's just like, I had been listening to a lot of this and I wanted to try this. And when I'm gonna get to the, the current one that I'm working on now, um, it's the same thing where I, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of this and I'm trying to make it, but Felt Cute Might Delete Later um, has a lot of just really almost vignettes of songs and that's what a lot of lo-fi hip-hop is where it's just like you have you have like two or three ideas and you want to really kind of express those ideas without um without coloring the rest of the thing and i think that there was there was a lot of fun to just go through all this and i, I realized that i'm just taking a lot of time talking about the back log of albums that i've made but maybe that's kind of most of this episode in general um but yeah, I, I, I don't want to go song by song through here, but a lot of them are just lo-fi hip hop tracks that are only like two and a half minutes long. Um, actually, almost all of them are two and a half minutes long. That's interesting. I didn't really notice that before. Uh, some of them were tracks that I did bring in from uh, like things that I had made beforehand. Specifically, Embers, I think, was kind of the big one that I brought in. Oh, and Cafe Benedict. Those were both songs that I had written beforehand that I kind of just transplanted, transplanted in. But I felt like they fit, so it was, it was definitely worth doing. Um, one of my favorites from that one is 404 AM, um, where 404 is, is a common term, term in like like web searches and like online where it's just like, if you get a 404 error, that means it's not found. And 404 AM is just like one of those days where it's just like you either have insomnia or you've just been up way too late and just like your brain's not found. I've, I think I was in that position when I thought of that and I was like, Oh, that's a good song name. And then I tried to go to sleep. <clears throat> and then the title track for this felt cute might delete later is just really out of sorts for me where it's like, I never really thought of being able to make, cute music and i was really pleased with how that came about um just kind of the chip toony feel and the the little camera shutter sound at the end which kind of ties into the actual album art it just it just really makes me happy every time it kind of comes up on random for me 
And then actually, really, I wanted to talk about the last two, uh, Revel in Disaster and A Brief Moment of Peace. Um, Disaster Peace is a uh, is an artist who primarily did video game music for a long time, but also had also uh, moved into movies. Um, he did the music for It Follows. But it uh, Disaster Peace is a big influence on my art and really one of the reasons why I got into making music for games in the first place. And um, I wanted to kind of make a Disaster Peace-ish song with Revel in Disaster and then kind of resolve that feeling with a brief moment of peace. Actually, a brief moment of peace was another remnant from the Still There soundtrack. It was just something that didn't fit quite right inside the album, but it was such a beautiful song that I wanted to put it somewhere. And that really brings me to the current challenge that I'm doing, which is the 2020 National Solo Album Month Challenge. And I have um, been listening to a lot of doom jazz. And if you're not familiar with that, with what that is, that is um, really slow, really ambient, dark, but not necessarily menacing jazz. Um, there is a album called Black Earth by uh, Bohren and their Club of Gore um, that I have been listening to kind of obsessively over the last <laughs> couple weeks. And it's just a beautiful album and, and well worth checking out if you wanted to uh, get a better idea of kind of what I wanted to try to do. But I honestly don't know. Um, but the idea for this one came about from a tweet that I saw. And um, the tweet was, the moon seems unaffected. And it was a picture of the sky and the moon. And it was just a really beautiful picture and just a very interesting Um, way to present that the moon seems unaffected and I I feel that it's just a really interesting reflection of this year where there has been so much going on not necessarily all of it good most of it bad and even though like we're all afflicted with this strife and this anxiety of everything that's happening the moon seems unaffected like the 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 greater nature of the the world and the universe doesn't really care and that ambivalence is just really interesting to me where it's just like there there's something greater than this small earth hurtling through space you know and i wanted to try to reflect that feeling in music and i feel that doom jazz and this dark jazz is really the way to go for me to do that. And I'm really excited. Hopefully by the time you're listening to this, I have one or two songs either in the works or, or done. Um, but I don't know because I'm recording this on Halloween. (laughs) So I, I, I really think that it's going to be a lot of fun and I I'm really excited for, for making this, but yeah, the, the general idea of this is just kind of the, the moon seems unaffected and how we interpret that. Um, I I've written down a couple ideas for like song names and stuff, but aside from that, I don't really have much else aside from just the fact that it's going to be this slow, methodical, really, really chill music. And, um, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. So anyway, that's kind of how I approach some of these albums. I know this is kind of a weird one where I'm just kind of going through and, and talking about, um, prior works, but you know, I think that it's really interesting just to hear how people approach, uh, works. I, I mentioned pretty lights, uh, a bit ago, and there's actually a really good documentary about how pretty lights put together his album, a color map of the sun. I really highly recommend you check that out. It's absolutely fantastic how, um, all the work that he did to go into that way more work than I've ever put into an album, but it seems like he actually had a, had a budget. So I, I mean, <laughs> there's only so much you can do there. So again, thank you so much for being a Patreon subscriber. I really genuinely do appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. And I will talk to you in the next one. Be remarkable.